chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I don't know which, how, how many um, of these, five, six, I don't remember now, that we've been talking about. I believe, I believe it was the Lord that impressed, amen, us to go down this road of stirring up your pure minds and getting you to believe, man, amen, in not just the spirit world in general, we say we do, amen, but so many times we live so far into the natural realm. We tend to forget, amen, there is a world that is around us. And specifically, amen, the angels of the Lord. Amen. Your God and angels, praise God, because you should be cooperating with them. They are doing everything they, they can do to keep heaven's mandate concerning you. And so, amen, but not just that, amen, you, it, is an, it's, it is imperative that you press into the things of God and that world to the degree, amen, so that you can begin to move in to what you have been destined and called and created to be. Amen. Everything that have happened in your life, bad or good, if you believe in the word of God in Romans 8, everything that has happened have prepared you for this day. Amen. Amen. And so we say it and we will continue to say it in order for you to finish well, not go to heaven. In order for you to finish well, you will need their help. Amen. Jesus had to have their help. So where does that leave us? Amen. So looking in the direction where the world is headed today. Then we have to come to this realization. We have to come to this realization. That ultimately our walk with the Lord might lead us in prison. Amen. Amen? So we want to look what the scripture has to say about today. Angels and prison. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we Americans tend to think that what we see happen around the world will never happen here. Ultimately, it will. To what degree? Only God knows. And only God knows. And if he chooses to share with you, amen, to display your testimony in prison, then you have to have come to the place in the awareness that you cannot let prison destroy your testimony. Amen? Amen? So I'm grateful to God that he put stories in the word of God about great men and women and the things that they had to conquer. And brother and sister, there is no excuse for us because we have their life to look at. Amen? There is absolutely no excuse. So because we have their life to look at and because we have the word of God to carry with us, then we can do more and go farther. Because you cannot accomplish anything without a level of truth coming to you. Huh? You shall know the what? Truth. And the truth will set you free. To do what? To do what God called you to do. Amen. Amen. With a certain amount of freedom comes a certain amount of responsibility. So in Matthew 24, 3, and, he, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, because of what he had just got through preaching. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And, so they asked him three things. When does these things happen? What is the signs of it and the end of the world? So this event that we are looking at in this particular scripture, as I said before, took place shortly before Christ was arrested, okay, and later crucified. Now he told his disciples some things to look for right before his return. Amen. Now, three of the gospel writers, if you did not know, 
included this story in their writing. Luke was the only one that included a sign that none of the others mentioned. So look at it, Luke chapter 21. None of the other three writers, two writers, mentioned this but Luke. Luke chapter 21 and verse 12. But before all these, in other words, all these things happen, okay, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you. Okay? Then he tells you what some of that persecution would be. Delivering you up to the synagogues. You say, well, why up to the synagogues? Because that's where they will be tried when it comes to Jewish people. Now, when it comes to us as New Testament Christians, it is church, the church, that will try you. Not some legal court system, you understand that. But your name will be dis put on display. You will be tried in the court of opinion in the church. Amen. This is what he's saying. And into prison. You say, well, how is this possible? Because those that will be hated in those days are Christians and Jews. And ultimately, at the appearing of the Antichrist, remember, that will be a one world religious system. Amen. And a one world governmental system that will work cohesively to do what? Destroy your testimony. So this is why it will be very easy for you to be thrown into prison. That means then there is what? There is no more constitution. There is no more human rights. Not for us. Now you've got to come to this realization. If you're still alive, these things are going to happen. Now I told you, I believe by the Spirit, the reason there is a great falling away sin around this very thing. Offense. Christians are going to become offended because of the things, bad things, perpetually, that will begin to happen to us. Amen? So you got to remember, you got to stir up your pure mind to the fact that Jesus said this would happen to you. Amen. And that bad things happen to good people. Right? Well, in that sense, in that sense and context, you can't think it's yourself as good. Amen. This is how Jesus got through what he got through. Remember his Remember his salutation to one? Why are you calling me good? There's only one good. Right? Any goodness inside of you is because of Jesus. Don't you ever forget it. Hallelujah. So if they did it to our Lord, it is an honor for it to be done to us. This is the way you have to see it. So, there is a growing possibility of imprisonment for Christians because of their faith. Now I remember when we dedicated this building, Brother Hans sat right here and prophesied. And that's the only reason that, <laughs> that I stayed here and continued to fight. Okay? And thank God every day for the landlord that we had. Amen. Brother Hans right here prophesied. He said, Pastor, I see you comforting praying over someone whose family member has just been martyred for their faith. Let that soak in. <laughs> we don't think it's coming to America. But ultimately it will. See, this is why, brother and sister, we must, it is imperative, the more we stay on our knees, the more we can govern what happens in our region. Huh? We cannot let laws be passed that will contradict truth. We cannot. So it's time to what? It's time to fight. It's time to fight. 
we do our fighting work on our knees. My house shall be a house of prayer. War. So we need to build, and the purpose of the message, we need to build your faith to the reality of the Lord's care for you. And I'm talking about angel care. If you are still alive when these things begin to happen. And if you don't do nothing stupid, you will be. <laughs> so, what is changing in the nations of the world as you examine, as you look around? Huh? Huh? It's, it's not, this, is what I want you to, this is what I want you to see. And this is how they would do it. They even just don't dump things. The devil just don't dump things on you. He slowly brings it in. Right? You remember the frog? <laughs> see, the Bible tells us the Antichrist will not come in with the sword. They will vote him in. They will welcome him. So God would allow him to set the planet up in such a situation that people will think he is the only help. Deception will be at such a level that many will be fooled that he is the Messiah. This is why they will vote, welcome him in. He will be held as the second coming. So that means, brother, sister, you, it is imperative that you do things, you must do things that will keep you free from deception. This is what this is about, all right? So what, 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 what is changing in the nation of the world is it's not so much you breaking present laws that's on the books. But what is beginning to happen is that some laws are being written in such a way that if a person gives public expression of a certain part of their faith as Christ, in Christ, you will be breaking these new types of laws, such as several years ago, there was a man actually in England was arrested because he was preaching against homosexuality on the streets. I don't know if you heard about that. See, that's just an example of what they're going to do. Why, why, why are they pushing this gender thing? Why are they? Because this is the number one thing that they're going to use against the church. Amen. It's no more, it's, it's no longer human equality. It's gender equality. Amen. Amen. That someone that calls themselves trans this and trans that and God and I how many names they got for themselves out there now. When you stand to, to disagree with that and just automatically preaching it in the pulpit, you will be hauled into prison if you don't deny what the word of God says. And see, you got to accept the fact that, well, you know, that's no big deal. That's just some. I can, I can just say, okay, okay, okay. No, you can't. Truth is truth. And you need to see this particular truth. The destruction of the family. You know, in, in this, in, 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 in some of this, in this stupid, some, some, somebody, I don't know if it was this bill that the, our present, Congress put in or someone in some, some states, they want to take out um, mother and father and put something else in there. Parent. See, so somebody said, well, what's the big deal? They're attacking the Bible. Brother, sister, at the core of that from which Go back to the book of beginnings. What is the most important? Everything God did was based upon the creation of male and female. So this is why they are eroding it. And as Christians, we cannot sit back like we have done for so long and things are running over us like a bulldozer before we decide to stand up. Look at Genesis 39 verse 23. 
Genesis 39 and verse 23. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, meaning Joseph, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. This is Joseph. So being in prison didn't stop the blessings of God on Joseph's life. So we see how God was with Joseph. And he, when he was unjustly put in prison. Because remember he was lied on. By his master's wife, lustful wife. Amen. So now he's in prison because of what? His testimony. God stayed with him. Jeremiah 39, 15. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of prison, saying. Now here's Jeremiah now. Most of the uh, uh, other ones that were carried into captivity, Babylon. Jeremiah was left behind. And so he's preaching to these, these backslidden ones that are left remnant, that scattered all over. And they didn't want to hear him, so they threw him in prison. His own people. Because he's saying, in a nutshell, y'all in this mess because you disobeyed God. Huh? Now, it's one thing to preach truth. Amen. And that's why, that's why, that's why, believe it or not, why more and more churches will begin to empty. When you tell people it's because of this, your disobedience, amen, that you're where you're at. Now, when the prophetic mantle will begin to fall on the church, amen, men and women of God will get more, even more specific about your rebellion. Amen. The spirit of seeing and knowing. Hallelujah. I mean, in the, in the, in the true house of God, of course. So, but this is what I want to emphasize. One very important truth in this particular verse. How God was not only with the prophet, but he gave him a word while he was there. Now, let me ask you a question. Where would your mindset be if you were them? After living your life according to truth, and you still end up being treated like a, like a criminal. Where will your mindset be? I remember these men are writing the scriptures now with their life. They're not where you are. They can pick up truth and encourage themselves in the Lord. These are trailblazers. So would you be at peace? Like Peter? When he slept like a baby amongst two guards, would you be at peace? Or like Paul, who sang and prayed real loud and everybody heard him? Huh? Or would you be totally on the verge of being offended like John? So how does angel, how does God angels help us in prison? Now look at Acts 12, 1. Now these events took place in the, in the beginning stages of the church. Now it was when many in the church were being persecuted. By many outside the church, but also those within the Old Testament church. Amen. Now, just as things was, it shall be. But in the ending, it will be seven times worse than it was in the beginning. And it was bad in the beginning. The church at its birth and then the church at its maturity. See, it's all about stopping the church with the enemy. And if that means killing you, then so be it. See? So God is in is destined, God is, if I can use this word, bent on bringing you into your purpose, carrying out your portion of ministry in the kingdom. 
Amen. So, in Acts 12 and 1. Now about the time Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Now the word vex in the Greek includes the idea of an evil act. It's not just an evil look. <laughs> right? It's more than that. So since Herod was not born again, it also means to persecute then with bodily harm. Okay? Now verse 2. Now this is the, this is the stage now. This thing is an increasing. Primarily to what? The leaders. Okay? So the more you are out front, the more you will be targeted by the devil. Right? Amen. Cut off the head is the idea of the, of the devil. Okay? And he, verse 2, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Now, according to scripture, James, um, James then was the first apostle to be martyred. Okay? Not the first Christian apostle. We know Stephen was the first martyr, but James was the first apostle. So Herod then, a civil government official. So this is the government. All right? And he's over the Hebrew people, but he was appointed by Rome. So you can, you can probably rest assured Herod was a yes man, only looking for, to further his career. All right? So he decided to kill James. Now verse 3. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. Amen. You know being popular. You know how politicians do. They want to be popular among their constituents. It's, it, 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 it sends this blind favor. That one gives to a politician. That is danger to the one who does not walk in truth. So, he saw it please the Jews. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Okay? Okay? Only reason why he didn't kill Peter right away. All right? So look at the attitude now. I, 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 want you to put, I want to put you in that era now, in mindset. Because the church is going right back there. Okay? So the attitude and mindset of the church in that day. The old move, the Old Testament church, was giving way to the new move, the New Testament church, all right? The old move refused to die, though, and began to do what? Destroy or murder those in the new move. Like what we're going to see in the coming days. The remnant is going to emerge, y'all. And bring forth a new powerful moment. Preaching a new level of truth. Amen. That will be scoffed by the rest of the church. Amen. That new level of truth will be in retrospect to who God called you to be. Sons of light. Heirs. Equal with the Godhead. Amen. That's truth. Well, many in the church thinks that's heretic. They thought in Martin Luther's day, a simple, the just shall live by faith was heretic. <laughs> just that little truth there. 
So that tells us what? That a church will come to a level of such darkness that simple truth, amen, will bring such a level of light. But in actuality, what's happening is showing people their sins. Every time you speak truth, you expose people's sin. Now, here's the church who's supposed to be walking with God when one part of the church exposes the sin of the other part of the church. She refused to humble herself like the Old Testament church did before Jesus. So she rose up and did what? Killed him. The same will happen to you. The exact same thing. The Old Testament church had failed to such a low level. 400 some years of silence of the prophets and the word of God. See, we came out of a church dark age in the 16th century. And God has been constantly trying to restore. And so there is a level of darkness that will hit the church again, the world. And that deception within that darkness will seep into the minds of believers. And it will systematically rob you of the truth that is so prevalent, obvious today. Amen. This is what will create the tension in the war. Just like the tension in the war that is being created now. Between ethnicities right now. The same thing. So the whole purpose of God putting this in the word of God is to do what? To encourage you. To don't lose heart. Don't let your faith fail. Amen. When you're hauled into prison, that does not mean you fail. That's what the enemy will use. That's what he will use. Now look at the fourth verse, Acts 12, 4. You know, you have those when, when, um, when Herod killed James, the people called for more blood. Who's the people? The church. <laughs> See, this wasn't the world. This was the church calling for the blood of Peter. So, with the, so the Herod had the intention of killing him right then. But he was not religious. But he was ruling over people that were. And so he followed there. He followed Judaism to that degree. So they put Peter in prison with the idea of bringing him forth after the feast. Okay? So this is the only reason Peter wasn't killed right away. All right? See, in the, in, in the coming uh, apostate church today, as the Pope, he presently is, pushing these many paths lead to God. All paths. See, there will arise strongly within the church that it is not necessary to be born again. Right. See, because all these other religions don't teach born again. See? So the Pope is soon, the Pope is soon going to have to show his hand. But by that time, you know, it's like the fog in the water. So many people are going to be so deceived, many are not going to pull out. Remember the story I told you about the minister, the evangelist that the pastor invited in. And God told, told this new Christian girl after the first message, she had the witness, don't go back. 
Now here's a new born again person. And how some old ones have been in the, in the way for years. Stayed. Shoot, but after four or five messages, the fa- pastor finally stands up and says, wait, 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 wait. What's too late then? The frog in the water. You're going to have to give me chapter and verse for that. And the advantage of, oh, I'm way out past that thing. Call the Bible thing. In other words, he, he you know, he, he, you know, <laughs> he got the saw, he got the the saw mentality. I'm speaking for God now, so that means I change whatever is in the Scripture. See, that's the mentality. That's the mindset the Pope has. That he speaks for God. See, so this spirit is already moving throughout the church. And so with that said, what's going to happen? The same thing that happened then. Those who don't believe in being born again, they will take pleasure in your death. (laughs) Those who believe in being born again. That's what's going to happen. The enemy bringing up evil and hatred in the hearts of those who were misguided. So in verse 4, still in Acts 12, and when he had apprehended him, him being Peter, he put him in prison, delivered him to four quarantines of soldiers, quadrant of soldiers. That's a lot. You know? So, so why so many? So he didn't hear about slippery Peter and these apostles because he didn't kill them right away. Intending after Easter or Passover, our scripture interpretation, they said Easter, but it's Passover, to bring him forth to the people. So, now look at verse 5. His intent was to kill him like he did James, in front of the people. Okay? Why? Because the people were hardened for blood. No doubt many of these people, Peter probably had healed. (laughs) So Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So we sign that the church now is doing what she was called to do. Prayed without ceasing while Peter was in prison. So, so we, should, we should be doing the same thing. There are those who are in literal prisons, but there are those who are in prison in their mind. Amen. So you and I as believers should be, be, should be praying that Christ be formed in people. Now verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping so Herod was going to bring him the next day the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison all right now this is what I want you to zero in on the attitude of Peter would you have been slound asleep knowing you're going to lose your head the next morning? What kind of thoughts would have been going through your head? Peter is so sound asleep, the angel had to smote him to wake him up. You want to know why? God gave him a special gift of peace. Just like he did Daniel. See, that same peace will be made available to you in your day. Same peace. Peace is a very powerful thing, y'all. It's very powerful. It stabilizes faith. 
You remove peace, then come flooding into you doubt, unbelief, fear. Amen. So, now look at verse 7. 12 and 7. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise, up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Now, in response to the prayer of the church, so somebody in there was believing. Not all of them. That was evident by the story that we'll read. God sent a special angel to him. No, I want you to notice certain things now. The angel was not sent until the night before. Ain't that just like God? God will run you to the very end. The night before he was, was to be brought out to be executed, first of all. Now, let me tell you something else you might not didn't know. The term, every time you see the, this term in the Bible, the term angel of the Lord means he was, he was a leader of a group of angels. That phrase in the scripture. So it tells us there was a host of angels that came. To free him. And no one was awakened but Peter. All right. Now verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself. Look how this piece was working man. <laughs> when he was come to himself. He said now I know of a surety. The Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So when Peter was, it was only when he was out of the prison that he realized he was really free. <laughs> he thought he was having a dream or a vision. He didn't know it was a jailbreak. <laughs> I mean, look how deep this piece was. So the father accomplished two things for him then. He was delivered from prison. And because this was a feast, most of the nation. Now listen to this. And this is something the Holy Spirit pointed out to me. Because it was the feast. That most of the nation was there, right? Right? From all over. Then most of the nation was expecting Peter's death. Because they did not believe in the Messiah he was preaching. Amen. I mean, that's, that's pretty scary. So, so, so think of the turmoil that was going on. All right? Within the church. Okay. Not so much governmental. But. The. the There was this. Underlying. Pressure by government. Okay. And. Herod. Was applying that pressure. Because what. The spirit of the Lord brings liberty. He was seeing, and that's why, that's why many dictators, the first time they come into a country, they remove the Bibles and they start removing the Christians that believe in the Bible. Why? Because fear of death doesn't bother us. Amen. It will cause more to be emboldened and stand for truth. That's the power of unity. Amen. That's what, the, that's what heaven saw Nimrod had working for him in the earth. When he introduced occultic worship on the planet. All the world was in unity and of one language. This is why the devil got the church so divided. It has so weakened us. The different denominations, 
the different labels. It has so weakened us. That's how he's been able to pick us off. This is why when the remnant arises, there will be no disunity because of the development of Christ in them. And this is, this is the only reason why Christ will have his way in the earth because a group would arise up out of the church. That's, that's the only reason. This is why they went out the apostles. The apostles. Hallelujah. Now verse 14 and 15. And of course now Peter's got out. He's going to the house where they're praying. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they, they said unto her, you're mad. Now they praying for the man to get out of prison. Well, somebody there had to be, had, had to be believing. We know it was not the bulk of them. But she constantly affirmed that it was him. They said, it's his angel. <laughs> so, so why did they just immediately go to the door? So this tells you another thing. Not only were they praying for Peter, they were praying more because they were afraid. <laughs> right? That they were next. <laughs> huh? His angel, meaning that what? Peter's probably already dead. <laughs> so why the angel knocking at the door? He, the angel come to tell us. <laughs> uh, see how your mind go, man, when you, when you let fear dominate you. So, two things with this particular text. The whole while Peter was in prison, and after he got out, his God angel was with him. Now think about this. Ministering that peace to him. But it was another group of angels the Father sent to deliver him. See, you need to remember this pattern. Okay? God will use your guardian angels to minister to you. In times of deliverance, God will send a host to help you. We see this pattern in Scripture. So now I know what you're thinking. The Bible doesn't say the same type of prayer that went up for Peter didn't go up for James. The Bible doesn't say that. We can only assume that it did. Okay? And you can't infer that Peter was more important than James. See, this is the, this is the games the enemy play in your head. Right? You don't compare yourself with anybody else. You cannot get into the mind of God and his purposes unless he reveals them to you. See, this is providence. All right? It's very important. Of God, whether who lives or dies. Now remember, Peter had already been told that he would see old age. Remember, Jesus prophesied that to him. So that's another reason why Peter could sleep. Peter, no, this wasn't his time. Now, whether James was so that, so that or not, we don't know. The thing is, is we got to stand in faith and welcome the peace of God wherever we find ourselves. All right? So, what am I saying to you? This pattern will continue in the coming days. And this is why these things are in Scripture. All who are in prison will receive the promise of peace from God. And there will be those that are freed. And there will be those who are martyred. Amen. That's the, that's the providence of God. Only God can see, amen, and know why. But it is not, you, you can't think random. You understand what I'm saying? You don't know the will of heaven, but it's all connected in divine purposes of God. 
It is not even that your, like I said before, that your life is more important than the other or is not relevant. It, it doesn't mean any of that. Amen. Every saint's blood, amen, triggers, amen, and gives birth to many more in the kingdom. That's, this is one reason why God's lined so much martyr's blood to be spilled. Amen. It's paving way for revival. More to hear. See, if, God, if the enemy can use human blood and curse and bring such curse, then the real purpose of blood, amen, is to do what? Set people free. Jesus proved that by his blood. Hallelujah. So, Revelation 1 9. Revelation 1 9. So, you, have, we, we, you will have those, amen, who are free, you have those who are in prison, and then you will have those who are banned. Okay? I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the hour that is called Patmos, for the word of God, this is why I'm there, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. So wherever you find yourself, you make sure it is for those reasons. <laughs> Amen. So now we know that John was banned on this small island that was about 30 miles in diameter. Okay. If you look up in, 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 in Wikipedia, you see about 30 miles. In, so you know then there was no food there, out there. It was very rugged, very rugged. We know he lived to be an old man, but don't know how he ate or how he took care of himself. Okay? We just get a glimpse, a hint. The Bible doesn't say either if he was free like Peter was. But he had the most profound experience of his life and wrote a very important letter to the church, the book of Revelation. Amen. Now, the purpose of sharing these truths to you, first of all, encouragement now and during these times of tests that will certainly come. Now, just because, as I said before, you may become imprisoned, doesn't necessarily mean that the Father is done with you just because you're in prison. So when you get in prison, don't go in there, you know, praying in tongue. Take me, Lord, I'm ready. That doesn't necessarily mean he's ready to take you just because you're in, in prison. As I said earlier, he may or may not free you. Those he does not, listen, he will have the imprisonment time to be a time of preparation for more ministry, such as Peter. Such as Peter. Listen, brothers and sisters, we need to get this out of our head that things are random with us. There is no such thing as random. You hear me? Either the enemy is pushing the strings in your life through your emotions that's causing you to act, or God. There's no such thing as random. If God is doing, every act is a recorded purpose. Amen. Every single one. So, just like Peter and John, or preparation of ministry like Peter or John, or does something in your life that will have you, that will have important effects upon the life of other believers if he takes you out? And if he doesn't, then he has a purpose of leaving you in captivity like he did John. Now remember, according to Paul's writings, at Paul's death, what happened? More and more believers wax strong in faith. See? So in the coming days, 
if God sees fit, you lose your life in prison. It's not for nothing. It will bring great encouragement to those who are out still preaching the truth. Amen. See, that and more. So there's no such thing as falling for nothing. There's no such thing as that. So if John had not been faithful, and this is one thing you have to understand. If John had not been faithful during his imprisonment, he would never have wrote the book of Revelation. See, one thing leads to another. So let me give you, look, look, let's look at one more person, the Lord himself. Matthew 4 and 11. Then the devil leaveth him. Of course, this was after his 40 days and nights. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. All right. Now, in this first text, right after John baptized the Lord, Holy Spirit leads him to the wilderness. All right. He was tempted and fasted 40 days and nights. Part of that ministry, okay, was the angels bringing him food. That's what they did. They brought the Lord food. That's how they strengthened him. Now, I want to point out something to you, something that I didn't realize. Because Christ was without sin, the angels' ministry to him was only to his physical body. All right? And there's two obvious places. We look at the other one where the scripture shows us that concerning the Lord. Now look at Luke 22, 43. Luke 22 and 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Now, you know the story was when he was in the garden, remember? Right before he was crucified. He was both, the Lord was both emotional and physically tired. How do you know that? Well, what happened to him while he was praying? So much that he what? Sweated drops of blood. See, something that you don't understand, when the power of darkness targets your mind, you are not successful to fight that off. None of us have had the blunt and brute force of darkness released upon the mind but the Lord. No one but the Lord has. No one but him. You could not take it. You could not take it. The Lord could because he was without sin. And that's what he was destined to do. The little oppression that we feel. Now, I can tell you this, we as a church, meaning the body of Christ at large, will feel the, the force of this dark level of darkness like no other church or church person ever in history. Right? We're the body. So the enemy will be able to release that brute force that he released on Christ on the body at large in these last days. Okay? So that doesn't mean we will feed each individual will feel it to the level and the degree that the Lord did. No. It will be dispersed throughout the body as a whole because we are his body, his physical body, and his spiritual body in the earth. Amen? Christ the man who represented the church, okay, at that time, experienced it. We as a whole would experience it. In the same way as Christ's fullness is in all of us as a whole, right? Not in one person, in all of us. This is why it's so important for us to come together. Unity is so important. For us to experience that degree that he releases in all of his people. So let's look at another scripture. 
Acts 9 and 19. That will help us understand this, this word strengthening. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul, being now Paul, certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. See, he received meat and was strengthened in his physical body. So after Paul's salvation, remember, when he was traveling to Damascus with those letters, he discovered later on that he was blind. He, was, he remained blind, remember, for three days. And then a man, Ananias, remember, came and prayed for him, and his sight returned. Now, he did not eat or drink for three whole days. Uh, this, is the on, this is only the second time Holy Spirit inspired Luke to use a particular word that is translated strengthen. Okay? Once was with the Lord. He did it so we could understand this particular word. So his body was weak from what? Not eating food, right? So when he ate meat given, his physical body was strengthened or he became strong. So what am I saying? The angels have the same ability to strengthen your body either by bringing you food or as they did the Lord or by touching you. And when they touch you, you feel as though you have eaten food like John did. Amen. So if you're sitting in prison and they ain't feeding you, don't worry about it. When the angel shows up with a cake from heaven... Amen. See, these are the things that you can expect. God is not going to leave us alone. Now, in Revelation 1 and 1, Revelation 1 and 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So John was a word. Now, listen to this. Very important. Because John was there during the ministry of Jesus, okay? So John was aware that when Luke reported that an angel strengthened Christ in the garden, it meant that the angel Luke mentioned was leader of groups of angels. Now, John knew this. So when John was in exile, when he saw a group of angels with a leader, remember we just read, we just read, signified by his angel unto his servant, John, okay? So when John saw the leader of a group of angels, when he was in exile, then he knew that they were coming to do what? To minister to him. Like they did the Lord. He knew this. He also realized that they had come to minister to his physical body. All right? Now, can you see the importance of this? Why did, John, why did John have faith? Because he knew what had happened to the Lord. And this is why these things are in Scripture, for you to have faith as well. So if the Lord permits you to be put in prison, this is what I'm getting to, because of your testimony, and remain there, okay, it's not for nothing. It could be to shed your blood there to inspire many or to prepare you for more ministry. All right? He will always send a group of angels, always, like this to minister to you as long as you're in prison. Always. In this way, he will keep you alive as long as he has planned, not them. Amen. I just tell the Lord, Lord, I'll do anything, but I, I'm really not into pain, but I'll do anything. <laughs> He's going to have to help me, I'm telling you. So, so that word signified that in the text means that the coming of the angels were a sign to John. It was a sign to him. 
when the angels strengthened the Lord, when he prayed in the garden, it was a sign that the suffering taking place. Now listen to me. It's very important. I'm going to say this right. That the suffering taking place at that moment and what would take place during the event when he was on the cross, both, was a part of the activity of the church of Christ. Okay? And I'll tell you what that means. So when John saw the angels come to him, he also knew that his imprisonment or exile was being used by Christ to be part of his church. Now what does that mean? I say it this way. There will be times in the future that you may be put into prison because of your public testimony of faith in Christ that our Father will deliver you. But if he doesn't, he wants you to know that he will always include your imprisonment as part of the activity of the church of Christ. Meaning, you say, what does that mean? Meaning, somehow, what you, are, what you are going through, regardless of how it looks, it is playing a part in what he is doing on the earth through his people. Amen. That's what that means. You are playing a part. Just as your ministry from Christ is apart from him. You're doing your part in the kingdom. Well, your imprisonment and even your death is playing a part as well. It is not for nothing. Amen? Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. See, this is how the enemy will play mind, play mind games with you. Amen. See, John was in the very beginning. John, <coughs> John the Baptist was in the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. John the Revelator was after Jesus' ministry. So John the Revelator could see and gleam understanding of revelation from Luke and have an expectation that John the Baptist did not have in the beginning. No one had written. No one had written letters. Amen. The ministry of Jesus was like none other. So John is fighting in prison. Close to being offended. Because now he don't know if Christ is the one. Even though he declared he was the one. So the devil is really crushing his mind. And John is about to do what? Give up in his mind that his life and his death will be for nothing. This is where John was. And this is how the enemy played with him. And this is how he will play with yours. Amen. But John now got truth. Right? Just said if it was written. And it was later was written. And we read it. Well, Jesus sent him and tell him, tell John. Right? The truth set him free. John left the earth knowing that his life was not for nothing. Amen. And that it will mean something in the overall plan of God. All of us now are experiencing the meaning of his life. Amen. Father, we thank you today for the truth of your word. But most of all, Lord, what you will do in the coming days through your army. You will send a heavenly host of angels to the host that is on the earth. Your people are known it by you. And under the direction of Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God will be advanced through your people and through the ministering spirits that you send unto them. 
I pray today that your word will not fail them, Lord. Wherever they may find themselves, whatever situation they may find themselves in, what you have purpose for them, whether in life or in death, that they will overcome. Yes. Hallelujah. That they will fight a good fight of faith. Yes. That during those dark hours of their life, that they will take hold of eternal life. And that your name and your name alone will be glorified in their mouth. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness and what you will do and what you have promised to do in the life of your people. Come on, just lift up both hands and thank God for his word. Hallelujah. We take courage, Lord. We take strength today in our future. Hallelujah. Because you promised to never leave us or forsake us. Hallelujah. And you proved it in your word today. By being with your people. By Holy Spirit. And by the angels you sent unto them. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory. You are a good, good father. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And precious is the death of your saints. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. And we declare and decree today, Lord, if by life or by death, we consider it an honor to die in your army, to die in the kingdom yes. for the king. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you consider it an honor? Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. And that we will be found faithful as well. In the coming days. Hallelujah. In the name of the King. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well the Lord is good. Amen. I pray that he will assure and reassure you of that. In these days. Praise God. Well greet someone before you go.